Hey everyone and welcome to Behind the Build. This is going to be a little video that I'm going to start doing at the end of every extended project to really expound upon the things that I discussed in the previous videos or video depending on uh, how many videos it was featured in and also to ex just really go into detail about things that I like about the enclosure, why I did things the way that I did, issues that I came across as well as address comments and concerns that you guys left in previous videos all of that thing and today of course we're going to talk about the 190 gallon plywood enclosure for my king snake houdini and the first thing that i really want to talk about are the doors that go into the main enclosure and by far this was the thing that i put the most thought into but it was also the thing that kind of gave me the most worry for this setup because i was working on the entire enclosure before i really was set on a design for the doors so I'm working and working and the whole time I'm just dreading. I'm like, <laughs> what if I build this whole thing and I can't get the doors to work right? Or what if I have to add a center brace? Because really, whenever I built this, I thought about it. I'm like, what, what do other enclosures have that I don't like? What do other enclosures have that I like? And by far, the thing that really stood out to me that I did not want to include with this setup was the center brace. I mean, really, whenever you're spending that much time to build an enclosure like this and then you're doing something nice on the inside you you just don't want a center brace because it's like it's an eyesore i mean for real obviously it serves a very important function you know you could close the doors nicely it also adds strength to the build among a number of other things but really with this on the camera at least you can hardly even tell that there's a line here in between the glass and my eyes are pretty terrible and i rarely wear contacts or glasses so when i'm looking at this enclosure i pretty much don't even see the the divider between the glass so for me that was really what set this apart and obviously i already had these unlocked but Obviously I said, you know, it was just that, that little simple 45 degree cut on the doors was really what made this all possible. And man, as simple as that is, it took me so long to figure it out. The thing with the doors that I did know I was gonna do right off the bat was how they close. Cause as you see the door itself, it like goes flush with this and then it's flush in here too. So I designed that all straight from the get-go. I knew that's what I was gonna do. It was just a matter of how, how the doors were gonna come together, I guess. And once I figured that out, I was so excited. But a problem that I had with the doors is I actually had to do them twice. And I didn't talk about that in the video, but I didn't cut the dado thick enough. So when I was trying to get the pane of glass into one of them, I broke it. And it wasn't like a huge break and I'm actually able to salvage the pane of glass for when I do the next plywood tanks. But it's it snapped in one of the corners because I was trying to shimmy it into the dado and I was, I was pretty mad about that. I was just like, man, this isn't gonna work. And I just had to, had to remake the doors again, which was a, a real pain. But I actually ended up being able to salvage the, all the all the stuff that went into those doors, I was able to salvage them. So nothing went to waste. And you know I'm all about that on this channel, not letting stuff go to waste, really just <laughs> spreading things as thinly as you possibly can. Another thing that gave me a problem during the build itself was how the doors shut. And you know, it just has this bolt on either, either uh, board on the door. And I, from the get-go, I was like, yeah, that will definitely work. And I, I, I just had total confidence in it. But then once I put them in, I noticed that the doors could kind of bow outwards. And if you didn't have a snake, that really would not be a problem at all. But he's named Houdini for a reason. And that kind of, I'll deviate slightly. Somebody asked, why is it spelled the way that it is? And I got him when I was 14, I spelled it incorrectly and it just kind of stuck. So <laughs> that's, it is what it is. But anyways, they didn't shut how I wanted them to. So I was like, all right, I'll get some kind of a catch or a magnet or something like that to put on each door. And as you see, I got these like brown catches. And on the video, I 
said I didn't like them and now that they're on there I really don't notice them that much anymore which is nice but originally I had bought a pack of neodymium magnets I got them out my uh, toolbox but it, I wanted to put just like two of them into each door and the reason that I couldn't do that or <laughs> I guess really why I didn't want to is I was concerned that whenever I would drill into the boards I would potentially shatter the glass or that it just wouldn't work properly and I was testing it out on just some boards that weren't part of the setup to see if I could get the magnets to work correctly and I just I wasn't having any luck getting them to work out so I was just like screw this I went out to the hardware store and I found these and I was like all right those will work and I guess at that point it's really do do I care about how it looks that much I just want it to function right and it was one of those things where I just, I put so much work into it by that time. And you would think you put in that much work. Why wouldn't you take the time to find a better looking solution? I was just, I was done with it. I'm like, you know what? I just, I'm sick of this build. I want to be done with it. I want to move on. I want to do something else. Cause I'd been working on it for three months, four months. And not only that, but I had been planning it out for like three years. I was just like, I, I want to be done with this. So I moved forward, got, got the best solution I could come up with at the time. And you know, it's not the end of the world. The next thing that I wanna talk about is Dean. And obviously this enclosure is, it's an understatement to say that it's an upgrade from his previous setup because it's, there's, there's really no comparison. However, in an enclosure like this where it is naturalistic, and as I've said in other ones, it's not necessarily bioactivity that makes it naturalistic. And obviously that does play a part in it, but the way it's set up and just the overall aesthetic of it makes it naturalistic. So I could have pulled this off with fake plants and it would still be naturalistic because it's more or less mimicking the type of environment that he would expect. And if, did you see how he kind of like jumped at me there? that's he he totally changed and the reason that i say that is i think when he's in here this is like his natural environment so if he hears any sound in here he's instantly on hunt mode so somebody commented on the one video they liked how he was following my hand and if you saw i kept sticking it out to let him smell it and i was doing that so he wouldn't bite me because if i would literally just like dig around in here He'll bite me and he never bit me before in times past. He actually bit me once because my hand smelled like mice, but that was pretty much when I first got him and it was a beginner mistake. He's fine if I, you know, if I touch him, if I'm holding him, let him sniff my hand. But if I'm just like digging around in there, he'll strike because he thinks it's something. And he bit me when I was setting up the enclosure. He backed off instantly because he knew it wasn't food but I just think that his instincts kick in in this type of environment. And it's uh, just interesting to think that much of a change of an enclosure could really bring out the instinctual nature of a snake. And whether or not you like that sort of thing, I don't know, make a uh, naturalistic enclosure at your own discretion, I suppose. And since I just mentioned it, I'll briefly discuss why I didn't do bioactivity with this setup now. I know that a lot of you guys probably expected it and quite honestly I don't blame you since typically that's what I do with these type of setups and it would make sense in being in the realm of a naturalistic enclosure. However, in my opinion, whenever you start to get into these larger animals like a six and a half foot king snake for example or larger lizards, different things like that, I just personally I don't think it's that good of a solution and the reason that I say that is big animal means big waste. And sure, you have the cleanup crew to clean up the poop and all of that sort of thing, but I think you should just get rid of the poop as soon as it's in there. And trust me, with him at least, you know when he poops, it stinks, it smells up the whole room, and even in this enclosure where it's kind of closed off and everything, you still smell it. And uh, rather than let it fester in there and wait until the cleanup crew cleans it out, I'm just gonna take it out myself. And obviously, I might leave a little bit behind accidentally and if there was a cleanup crew it would help because they would get rid of the uh the excess but they're not going to take care of urine and other things like that they're only going to take care of feces so 
really, even if it was bioactive, you'd, you'd be in your best interest to just remove the waste. Another thing was, since I actually handled Dean, I, um, not that springtails and isos would be crawling all over him, I just would per prefer that when I pick him up, I'm not going to have springtails all over me, and I'm not squeamish with bugs or any, none of that. I just, uh, I just didn't want to deal with any of that. Another thing is that for isos and springtails to thrive, they need a really moist environment. And with other snakes where you could have a moist environment underneath and dry on top, say if it was leaf litter or even a dry layer of substrate, uh, a burrowing snake, that's not going to work because they're going to dig down in the substrate and might spend a prolonged amount of time in the moisture and potentially get health issues, different things like that. I'm not really going to discuss too much about that, but that was another deciding factor and why I didn't go bioactive because you need that moisture in order to have the microfauna thrive. And I just, I really, I didn't want to mess with any of that. I just was like, okay, I want live plants and I want it to look nice. So that's what I did. That's why I didn't do it. Next up, I'll talk about the backgrounds. And originally I had, I just wanted to buy the backgrounds. I was like, you know what? I spent this much time working on the setup. Uh, why don't I see if I can get my hands on some of those naturalistic rock backgrounds that you see online. And I got it quoted and everything. And all I got to say guys is your boy ain't dropping that kind of money on a background. He's either going to make one himself, which is typically what I do, or uh, I'm just going to bite the bullet <laughs> and not do it. I'm a total cheapskate, as I alluded to earlier. I got to spread that money thin. I got a lot of projects going on. I'm not trying to blow it all on a background. So what do I do? I make this cocoa fiber background. And I got to say, I'm actually glad that didn't work out because when I came up with this background, I'm like, you know what? How can I make it in a way that it's not going to have to be silicone to the background? And that's what made me think of this sort of modular background that just fits into place and as i said in the video you don't need three of them say you just had a glass enclosure and you wanted one on the back if you make it snug enough it's gonna fit and you could also do this with the expanding foam backgrounds uh if you did a with like a foam and uh concrete background you can do that as well uh which i have a video where i made one of those if you guys want to see it i'll release it i just never did it because it was on one of those vertical 10 gallons i just I don't know. I, I didn't know if I should release it or not. If you guys are interested in that, let me know and I could, uh, I'll get it out ASAP. And so I came up with these. I'm not like crazy about them. I don't think it's the best looking background I could have done, but I don't think they're terrible looking either. I mean, it, it looks better than seeing a stark white background and I don't know. I think they look pretty solid when all the plants grow in and if the ficus ever takes to the background, which I kind of don't think it is, uh, that that would look cool but we'll see what happens quite honestly i might never silicone a background into a tank again unless i really have to uh i don't know there's definitely a lot of advantages to actually being able to work with the background before it goes into the tank you can get really detailed with it and i i just think there's a lot of it uh advantages as far as that's concerned and i don't think it looks half bad either so you know it is what it is Next, I'll talk about the plants. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of you guys were interested as to where I actually got them. And I had to bite the bullet, guys. I had to get all these plants at Lowe's. Normally, I would not suggest that. I mean, they don't have the worst plants. If you clean them properly and whatnot, you really won't have any problems. But they're known to have issues with their plants. So I had to get them there. And the reason is simple. I needed plants that were big. And sure i could have ordered them online i didn't feel like dealing with any of that because uh, I, I wanted to actually see the plants to know if they would work in the enclosure if i'm ordering them online i really don't know what i'm getting and it was important to actually see what they looked like to know if they would work with this enclosure so i got the plants i did i know that all of the things that i have in here are going to work except for i'm not sure about the ficus as i just kind of alluded to earlier I've only really ever grown it in an extremely like humid environment. We'll see what happens because this isn't the, the humidity is decent in here. It's not like it's not like my other enclosures. Though. It's like 90 percent humidity. Uh, there's definitely some new growth on these plants. All of uh, I actually got to trim these ones. They were white. You see, they're getting all crusty. I want to just cut those off. But a lot of these little like green ones down here, they're all new. There's a lot of new growth 
coming out down in here. Uh, not well. Actually, there's some some new growth on the fern as well. This is growing taller, the calathea, which is nice. I want it to kind of fill in all of that space. The philodendrons, especially. I mean, all of this here, that's pretty much new growth. That's crazy. I mean, within a couple of weeks. And I will also mention about the plants being poisonous. The uh, peace lily, that's actually a poisonous plant. And same with the philodendron and pothos is the same deal. They're all poisonous plants. Uh, the thing is that they have to be ingested for it to be poisonous. Now, Dean's not going to be eating them, obviously. And additionally to being eaten, I think you actually have to chew it for the poisons to be activated. I think you could just swallow it and nothing would happen. Something with chewing it from what i understand is actually what activates the poison so whether or not that's the case i don't know if some of you guys are more learned on that you can drop some knowledge down in the comments but that's that's my understanding of it at least next i'll talk about the water bowl briefly and originally i wanted to i wanted to make my own water bowl maybe do something out of concrete and coat it in epoxy do something like that and i'm just like you know what it's just so much trouble. I'm, I really don't feel like dealing with it. I'm going to have to remove the water bowl anyways to clean it when he goes in it. So really, I just used the same one that he already has. It doesn't look half bad, and uh, he likes it. So really, I got no complaints there. It is what it is. And I don't know if you can hear it right now. I'll amplify it on my mic if you can't, but the fan just kicked on. And that's a, definitely a good feature to have with this because... Unlike a typical aquarium where all it is is just like a screen on top and obviously you're getting some decent ventilation that way, the actual screen is covered up by the top section and there's the holes in the back that allow airflow in, but it's probably just kind of sitting up top. With the fan, it's actually pulling air from outside in and it's circulating the air that's in here. So that will do a number of things that will prevent it from becoming too stagnant in here or too humid it will kind of circulate the air to in inhibit mold growth which i haven't seen anything like that and quite honestly i don't really expect any of it but if it were to happen that will kind of deter it from you know deter it from happening uh another thing is that it will just just keep the air moving keep it fresh so part of me wishes that i would have put more plants in here from the get-go and the reason that i say that is how cool would it look to have like a cryptanthus here, here, and maybe like two over there? I don't know. I was just, I was just really thinking, man, why didn't I incorporate any cryptanthus in this? They definitely would have worked. So I think eventually I might go back and do that, but we'll see what happens. And as you can see, the lights just shut off in here. And I have my lights on a eight on 16 off cycle. And I know that Typically, it's like, oh, let's keep the lights on for 12 hours or even more than that sometimes. You're not getting any benefits from keeping your lights on that long. You're wasting electricity. Your plants aren't going to photosynthesize after a certain point. They're only going to take up so much for the day. So really, you might as well, I think, 8 to 10. That's kind of like the sweet spot. And if you think about the actual cycle of light outside, the sun isn't at peak brightness for 12 hours of the day. It's only for about half of that. You figure it rises and it sets. And during the rising and setting, it's actually getting gradually dimmer or gradually brighter. So whenever you have your lights on the tanks, it's at peak brightness basically. So really there's no point to have it for that long. Something else that I took into consideration when I was building this enclosure was stackability i mean let's be real anybody who's keeping reptiles probably they're not just keeping one reptile you want to stack stuff you want to make the most of your space because most of us we don't have a lot of space i mean i'm working out of this basement here and i i make do with what i have but i need more room and, and even when i get more room someday i'm still gonna want to use my space as efficiently as possible so i made this for stackability and to show you guys what i mean by that let me put this on top. So now we've got another tank situated on top of the main one. And originally I said I was gonna put three of them here and it was gonna be one for each of my crested geckos or well, each of my crested geckos would get one, not that they would share a tank. 
And then we'd have the third one over here for something completely new. But I was like, you know what? This isn't going to be as big as I want it to be if, if we were doing three of them. So I made two of them and those should be done relatively soon. Then we're going to get, get ready or get right into it, I guess. We're going to start making these into uh, bioactive vivariums for both of my crested geckos. Now, I would keep them together if they were both females, but we got a male and a female, so they're staying separate. Not trying, not, I'm not trying to breed them. I don't want anything like that going on. So we're keeping them separate. So really the last thing that I want to cover is prolonged maintenance and cleaning this enclosure. Now, I don't really think I'm going to have to clean it very frequently. And by that, I mean pretty much strip the whole tank down, spray it out, that sort of thing. And the reason I say that is because, as I said earlier, whenever he poops in here, I'm going to remove the substrate right away and his feces as well. Uh, if they're not festering around in there, that's not really going to create too many issues. Now, in terms of the plants, they may become root bound from time to time, or let's say that a plant ends up dying, it doesn't work out. I could easily just take the pot out, put a new plant in there, stick it back in, or even if I need to trade out the substrate to get some more nutrients in there, anything like that, it's really easy because of the way that I did the planters. Uh, further, I forgot to mention this earlier, but whenever he goes to the bathroom, he pretty much only goes in his water bowl. So additionally, like if he's going in there, I'm just dumping out the water and he's not really going in the tank. That also means that the tank itself isn't getting dirty with feces. Now, another thing I will mention is that in another video, you saw me feed him in a different enclosure. And somebody asked about that. And really the only reason that I do is for sanitary reasons. So uh, obviously it's not that clean if I just have like a dead mouse in here. And I don't always feed him in a separate enclosure, but I try to do it as frequently as I can just so that I'm not getting any uh, dead mouse germs in here or, or at least to mitigate them. In terms of cleaning the backgrounds, they're not really ever gonna need to be cleaned. Uh, he's not going to be climb. He does climb, but he's not going to climb up the side of the background and poop all over it. Like I can pretty much guarantee he's never going to do that. And so that's pretty much all that I can think to cover in this video. If there was a question that you left or you had another question and I didn't address it in this video, definitely let me know and I'll address it in the comment section below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit it with a thumbs up. Give me some love. Obviously, I put a lot of hard work into these and, you know, your, your positive feedback definitely helps. If you didn't like the video, well then, <laughs> give it a thumbs down. You know, it, it is what it is. I understand that you're not going to like every video that I put out, so let's be real with it, right? Gotta love this guy. So, that's it. That's what I got for you guys today. Stay tuned for more naturalistic builds. I got a ton of stuff coming up. We've got the 150 gallon coming up. I mentioned the bioactive crested gecko tanks those are coming up nano paludarium yes i'm working on it that's coming up all kinds of stuff literally i'm swamped with projects right now so i'm just trying to do them one at a time or release them one at a time i guess i'm working on them all simultaneously and it's just crazy right now but that's all i got going on thanks for watching as always guys i appreciate you and we'll see you next time